John Hoadley, Representative John Hoadley from Kalamazoo, is with us now who has renewable energy on his mind. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So uh, you have been uh, focused on the notion that Michigan could be 50% clean energy, renewable energy by 2035. What motivates you there? Well, if you're someone that cares about good jobs, if you're someone that cares that about energy security and being independent from the rest of the world, if you care about public health, uh, if you want cheaper electric bills, then you should also care about renewable energy. And so for myself and Representative Lazinski, who has a companion bill on energy efficiency, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we are pushing Michigan forward, that we become an energy leader, and we set a goal that says 50% of our energy in the state of Michigan will be from renewable sources by 2035. Do we have a goal now? We do. Uh, we have a goal right now that says 15% of our energy should be from renewable sources by 2021. Oh, wow. So this is a big jump. It is. You know, but the thing that's interesting about it is that it helps bring some certainty to the marketplace, which is good for business and good for consumers. Uh, and what it would do is it accelerates, but not uh, substantially, the pace in which we're already starting to move for, uh, for folks in the sector. What we see right now is over the last year, two years, three years, that renewable energy prices have come down so dramatically that this is the direction that folks are going. What we want to make sure we're doing now then is not locking us into outdated and more expensive energy choices that we have to live with for the next 50, 60, 75 years of a plan or a pipeline. So are we already then working toward this goal in um, with enough uh, energy, sorry for the pun, uh, to <laughs> really make a difference here? Absolutely. You know, we're starting to see uh, when we got the first renewable portfolio standard, that's what this is all called uh, mm -hmm. when you put a goal in for renewable energy. When we got that first pass and said, let's get 10 percent, people were um, – said, you know, I don't know if we can make it. We said 15%. I don't know if we can make it. But what we actually see is that uh, folks in the industry then rise to meet the challenge uh, because this is where all the, ener the uh, energy innovation is happening. And when you start you know, hearing places like Tesla talking about putting solar panels on your roof as part of your just roofing options, I mean, this is a, a technology that's on the verge of becoming mainstream and everywhere. Um, and so when we set more aggressive goals then for the energy production of our state, you know, this is actually just given some added, uh, a little bit of an added push to markets that are already moving in the right direction. And this is exactly the type of behavior the state should be doing then, saying, hey, we see that there's all these other benefits to it, jobs in rural communities, partnerships with ag, public health implications. Let's help bring more certainty to the marketplace, and that's going to give uh, – you know, business the queue where they need to go, so we'll see greater investment. Yeah, we talked with uh, Consumers Energy not long ago, and you know they've been on this uh, tack to try to get um, business and um, consumers to really begin to do some of the simple things we can do, or at least continue to do them to um, to get them to you know change their light bulbs to more efficient things and change mm -hmm. their appliances and all all of these things that that I guess are the no-brainer parts of this before we start to, you know, move into more aggressive things like solar panels and things that you talk about. Uh, are they, are the big power companies on board with this idea, 50% renewable by 35? Well, I'll say this. I, I love my partners um, in the energy sector. And, uh, you know, anytime that you, you say, hey, we want you to step up and do more, people like to drag their feet a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool thing is that, for all the hemming and hawing about, I don't know if we can make these goals, DTE, consumers, they've been great. And they've actually then hit all of their goals, right? So kudos to them for, uh, you know, uh, really hitting the marks that they need to hit. And when it comes to energy efficiency, uh, Representative Lazinski's bill would double our current standard, which would say instead of trying to save 1% of energy every year, let's try to hit 2 and, you know, because you already said it, and it's what we all know, the cheapest and cleanest energy is just energy we never use. 
when our light bulbs become more efficient, when our furnaces become more efficient, when we weatherize our homes so we're using less energy to heat them or cool them, that's just energy savings every day of the year. So, uh, you know, these things work together. Uh, the biggest thing that happens, though, is that when we start deciding what's the new type of power we're going to build in Michigan, as we see nuclear plants shutting down, as we see uh, you know, changes in the way that are some of our oldest coal-fired plants, uh, the trick is we have to give a clear indication that the state wants us to make those significant investments in clean energy, the wind and solar, uh, you know, things that uh, are never going to be dependent on what's happening in another country. They're never going to be dependent on, uh, yeah, you know, security of a pipeline. These are things that uh, the state can say with certainty, this is what we want to do. And then that's going to make us fill in all of our energy needs as our state continues to grow. The notion, I would imagine, is that uh, some of these ideas, uh, some of these uh, upticks in what we might do in our own homes to uh, uh, help achieve this goal are not necessarily easy to do right now. Do you have the sense that in order to meet that goal, it'll be easier to put solar panels on our roof and, and the other things we want to do? Well, actually, the good news is uh, there are a ton of programs that exist right now as part of the uh, current law that do make it easier for us to try to get those energy conservation goals. Uh, There are things, uh, there's both consumers and TTE have great programs where a lot of times they'll come out to your home for free and they'll uh, help you figure out how can you save energy and they'll bring with you light bulbs. So they'll bring with them um, insulation for your pipes so you're losing less heat when it goes from your water heater to your shower. So, you know, give them a call and schedule one of those energy audits. There's also uh, partners in the community. And if you look for them, uh, there are a number of really good partners that are out there that are that work with clients every year uh, to make sure that they have assistance, real financial assistance to then put into weatherizing their homes. And then uh, in some places like Kalamazoo County have gone so far as uh, adopting PACE programs where we actually pay for energy improvements with energy savings. So, you know, there's very cool things that we can do um, to make sure that, you know, we're getting the assistance right now. But at the end of the day, you know, there's more that we can do and the things we need to do are so important. This is why uh, myself and Representative Lazinski and so many other folks want to go back and say, we've got our energy law in place for the next few years. Let's, though, start figuring out what's next for Michigan now instead of waiting till the law expires and then figuring out what we want to do. You know, one of the things that I've heard said by lawmakers both in Michigan and and our Michigan delegation in Washington is, hey, listen, you know, the demand for electricity and and energy is going up and up and up. You know, everything plugs in and and recharges and all of these things now that we're doing. Uh, So we have to have a... Um, a, a mix of energy sources, renewable and otherwise, is that still the viewpoint? Well, what we have to have is reliable energy. And, you know, this idea that, that by nature that has to include carbon is not true. But what consumers know and they know and that we all know we need is that whenever you turn on the light, the power is going to be there. The very, uh, the, the amazing advancement we're seeing in in renewable technology right now is uh means that we're delivering solar and wind and other renewables at a cheaper price than we ever have before and i think the last part of the equation to make sure that uh all the certainty is there is the fact that battery technology so energy storage is really increasing now what that doesn't mean is that it doesn't mean tomorrow we're going to go and um shut down any sort of power plan and open up all renewable energy. That doesn't make sense. Plus, people have made investments. They need to get the full value of those investments. The real question, though, is as we start putting new investment into our state and energy companies are figuring out what type of facilities they're going to build, there is no reason that we shouldn't be looking at wind and solar as our number one choice. Because if we think about what we want for the next 30, 40, 50 years or beyond, it's the clean energy jobs that will that can't be uh, offshore. It's the clean energy health benefits that means your kids are going to breathe easier, and it's the clean energy security to know that another country, you know, Saudi Arabia, no one else, 
is going to get to dictate our energy future. So you had a you had a public session on this a town hall I think is uh, the way you phrased it on this subject the notion of of making Michigan fifty percent renewable by twenty thirty five and and if you're just joining us the the current goal is fifteen percent renewable by twenty twenty one so this is a big jump what was the uh, what were the thoughts of folks that you heard from uh, so I partnered with the Michigan League of Conservation Voters they're doing great work uh, on this subject we packed the room. Uh, and, you know, people were really excited about the goal. Uh, you know, they said, yeah, if we're thinking about what can we be doing that's looking 18, you know, years into the future, twenty, uh, nearly 20 years into the future, what's the type of world we want to live in? People were thrilled. And then they asked great questions about, you know, what sort of local companies are available that could help us with those goals? Um, you know, where, what's the new technology looking like? So we saw a lot of these uh, smart conversations. Um, but overall, you know, people were wondering what they could do to help pass the law. And, you know, we're at the point right now where the number one thing people can do is to call your reps and senators, right, and, and tell them that you support 50% renewable energy by 2035, that you support more energy conservation. And so, you know, let's have a conversation about those two bills. The other thing people can do, though, is it's going to be election season before you know it. So regardless what party you're in, Ask your candidates and you go to those forums, go to the primaries and say, what do you think about clean energy? And vote for the candidates that you agree with. Is this a political issue? Uh, I mean, all issues are political, right? Uh, so. And I'll tell you, the biggest the thing about this issue is that there's a lot of money. Uh, and when we talk about energy, right, we all pay our monthly energy bills. Uh, and there's some people that are doing really well right now, some companies and some that are trying to get in the space some that are worried about their market share. So energy is political. But you know, this is one that is not partisan. We see pe good people who disagree on both sides of the aisle on this bill, on these types of bills. Um, and so, you know, uh, we some of the best energy independence advocates are folks uh, on the Republican side, like Gary Glenn, who uh, I rarely agree with on many things. But, you know, there's things that we work together on when it comes to clean energy. And then there's some of my uh, Democratic colleagues that I, I wish would step up and do more for clean energy. Mm -hmm. That's why being involved makes a difference. All right. Uh, before you go, I want to give you a chance to talk about another thing, uh, a bill you'll introduce in September that has to do with call center jobs. What's this about? So I was really excited yesterday. Uh, Good Jobs Nation stopped and did a tour in Kalamazoo. And I'm uh, as part of a bill that I'll be introducing in September, it's called the Michigan Call Center Jobs Retention Act. Right now, there's 90,000 call center jobs in Michigan, and you can basically offshore those jobs in minutes. And that's bad for people. It's bad for our communities. What my bill would do is say that you have to give 30 days notice before closing down large call centers or moving a lot of those call volume um, overseas. And if you do, which you can, because this is America, right? You can always shut a business down. The second thing, though, is that you can't take our taxpayer subsidies to do it. Uh -huh. So you get put on a list, so you're ineligible for grants and loans. We're not going to use our taxpayer dollars for you to offshore our jobs. Well, this seems like a no-brainer. It should be a no-brainer. You know, yeah. This is a great example where you shouldn't get a corporate handout and then and ship our jobs somewhere else. So I'm hoping that uh, folks are going to want to support this bill. We're going to be introducing it in mid-September. So there's still plenty of time if you want your representative to co-sponsor the bill have them contact my office well and anybody who's made a call to a call center uh, has spoken with somebody in another country so we know those jobs are elsewhere did you say ninety thousand? we have ninety thousand in the state of michigan right now wow. so these are you i mean we all know someone in that that works in a call center has worked in a call center there and right now a lot of those are, are good paying jobs that support the family you know they have provide health insurance so these are the type of jobs that we want to be continuing here. And I'll also note this. When we lost manufacturing jobs, uh, a lot of state subsidies were then put in place to attract call and retain call center jobs yeah. in Michigan, but in country, states across the country. So we've already used taxpayer dollars to keep those jobs here. And you shouldn't get to take our money then and turn around and try to make a buck off of cheap labor somewhere else now. That's wrong. Fair enough. We appreciate the time as always, and uh, we'll check in again soon.
Always looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on. Representative John Hoadley of Kalamazoo, 95.3 WBCK.